everyone's favorite black friend tyler preston how are you doing today i am fantastic i just can't wait to talk about this movie because there's just so much stuff to talk about yes and we both saw the new joker movie and uh there's a lot to talk about in this movie this was a a, a very deep movie that has a lot of layers to it a lot of it's a movie that really provokes conversations oh yeah it's like definitely like the darkest movie like i've seen the avengers endgame i've seen Godzilla. i also seen john wick and all these movies i've seen this year including it part two this is by far the darkest i've seen well the thing about this movie that i really felt um is that it's not really a, a movie that feels like it's an origin for a comic book villain it feels like this is a, a, where, where they wanted to make a movie dealing with mental illness and how somebody slowly g dives into insanity, how mental illness slowly rots at them, pushes them over the edge. This, and they just of, this, this movie kind of reminds me so much about that movie from the 1976. It was Taxi Driver. Yeah, it was actually it was very inspired by that movie. Yeah, that's why they even had Robert De Niro in it. Right, like apparently like uh what was it? Martin Scorsese was actually confirmed to be the, the producer at some point, I believe. I believe so, yeah. But it's like it reminds me so much about that movie where it's just this character study about how a person just goes completely mad. And so I think they have large inspiration for that kind of movie. Uh, yeah, and um, I act like this movie is all that new. We've seen movies with a uh, really rotten main uh, protagonist before um yeah like for example i remember it was a uh, brick and bad where walter white was like from innocent to completely bad guy so right or uh, probably a better would be american psycho from the year 2000 like patrick bateman the main character of that movie he's probably one the most repulsive character ever like it, with Arthur uh, Peck from this movie, you do sympathize with it. You never sympathize with um, Patrick Bateman from that movie. <laughs> from beginning to end, he is just consistently one of the most loathsome, disgusting characters of all ever put to the screen. Yeah, like uh, you want to go into the plot of the movie right now, or should we just speculate? What oh, would the answer? Abs oh, oh uh, absolutely. I, I label this spoiler stream, so don't <laughs> okay, uh, don't feel right. the need to hold back on spoilers. But so, yeah. So Got apparently, it. like, the background for the Joker in this movie is that what happened was that his mom claimed that uh, he was uh, the the son of uh, Bruce Wayne's dad. But it turns out that Bruce Wayne's dad actually said he the opposite, that he was actually adopted. And he called him a liar. Oh, my God, you're lying. How dare you? And, of course, yeah. like, uh, Bruce Wayne's dad actually just ended up hitting him. And also, it deals with him just transforming from, like, of course, from, I guess, a person with mental issues to complete insanity over the course of the movie. Like, the amount of stuff that makes you go just, what the fuck, is just incredible. There was this one scene, of course, where, like, the girlfriend, what happened was that she met Joker at the elevator. She did, like, the gun symbol towards the head. And of course, apparently she was supposed to be like, you know, the love interest. But it turns out through the mid section of the movie, all of it was actually delusional. All of it was actually a dream. And so it makes you wonder just how much of the stuff in the movie that you see is actually real. Right. And now back to American Psycho, it did the same thing. Like at the end of, the, of that movie, it revealed that uh, some of the people you see him kill are still alive. So you are wondering at the end of that movie. How many uh, people did Patrick Bateman actually kill? And how many of these uh, killings you just saw were sick fantasies in his sick delusional mind? Right. Another example of this mind fuckery is just a part where the friend, apparently the clown at the job that he was at, he gave him a gun. And like towards like the middle of the movie, he asked him, what are you talking about? What gun? I did not give you a gun. And then like well, there, I think it was well, there. I saw that less is kind of a mind fuckery thing and more just, he doesn't want to admit that he gave this guy a gun. Like he's trying to just cover his ass. That's kind of how I saw that scene. I mean, it could be that, or it could be just like a mind, like a mind fuckery too. But, <laughs> but anyway, if not, then how did he really get the gun that he uses to commit these murders? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> right, right. So what happened was he just goes into the apartment. He gets the gun. He shoots the guy down. The midget was just freaking out. And he couldn't open the door. <laughs> Right. After like he saw that guy just bash the guy's head onto the wall, he couldn't get out the door because it was too tall. <laughs> well, he was probably just also not not just that because he was paralyzed with fear, like he just didn't know what to do. You know, I, he's like, "This guy is this guy going to kill me next?" So, like he was just kind of in a catatonic state. And and, and imagine uh, if somebody just straight up murdered a guy right in front of you, you'd probably be the same way. You'd be like, "Is he going to kill me next?" What's going, what's going on? And, that, and you, you got that sense with um, that other guy, the midget. <laughs> right, 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 right. And also, um, there was, uh, what else that I want to bring up? There was this one scene, right, where he goes into that television show because they saw that video of him doing, like, the stand-up. <laughs> and, like, for the first few minutes, he was just laughing nonstop. And then by the time he went there, he basically confirmed that he's the Joker, and he just shot like Robert De Niro's character on the on live television. <clears throat> right, but even though this movie set, um, I don't think it says the exact year, but it's clearly set in like the seventies or early eighties or something. That kind of seems like a condemnation of today's internet culture. The way a lot of um, sites, bigger sites, will probably find people who are mentally ill and probably find people who accidentally did embarrassing things in front of the camera and just kind of laugh at them and make fools of them and kind of showing the consequences of such things it, it, which which was also very interesting right like, a common uh, right, in today's it, world like, I, like since it was taking place in the 1970s it was actually believable that they got the tape of him doing his stand-up and so it wouldn't need to have the, <laughs> the internet for that to happen back then so no you wouldn't need the internet like even before the internet uh that that could still happen, but it wasn't. Um, but today it's gotten worse since every asshole on the street, they all got a phone in their pocket. So anytime you slip up on street, someone's going to be recording you. <laughs> you really don't really have like, any conception of privacy. Yeah, apparently one of the main reasons why the director of this movie did like stop doing the comedies like The Hangover and stuff was because of this cancel culture. Because apparently he thinks that the culture is too woke. He also mentioned how he's really upset that people were complaining about his movie, but not complaining about the violence levels in movies like John Wick. And he's absolutely fucking right. It makes absolutely no fucking sense that, that uh, this movie was uh, team kind of ganged up on by the left in a very unfair way. Because if anything, this movie's politics are center left. Like uh, a big thing that sets Arthur on his eventual spiral into madness is the fact that um, his therapy sessions and the medications that he was taking to keep himself under control are just suddenly cut off and he has no way of affording them anymore. And that eventually uh, it implies th uh, that had he stayed on his medications, he probably would have been able to stay sane enough that he wouldn't have become the Joker. Right. So, like, and so also, you, there's also the fact that, um, Hold on, I'm trying to think what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> but it's also the fact that um, besides the whole controversy about him saying the woke culture stop uh, making, he stopped making co comedies because of the woke culture. Like what also happened was uh, apparently there was like news of the FBI also spying on people's tweets. There's also the news, apparently like a theater in California, they canceled the screening there. There was, <laughs> there's so much news about this movie with the yeah, the yeah, this was this was funny. Okay, I heard that um, ABC News reported that one theater had a patron who apparently was drunk and was um, inappropriately um, making odd noises during some of the killing scenes, and that disturbed some theater goers. I'm and I'm think reading that thinking, is every time somebody is obnoxious in a movie theater, is that going to make the national news now? Uh, uh, every is every time some asshole shines his flat his phone in my face now i'm gonna get like a national news headline about it now i mean fucking break uh, if, if you say if you wrote an article every time someone was annoying in a movie theater anytime somebody was laughing too much brought bought a baby into the theater or was adding their own commentary what have you it would fill the news every time uh, that's what that, it's that like, happens how many times it's, it's not just for the Joker, though. It's like for every movie. Like every place have those people just talking over in the movies. Every place have their babies and bringing their kids. And to this would happen if that had happened in any other movies. 
All right. Think of how a non-event that is. Some guy got drunk and he was obnoxiously noisy in a movie theater. That happens every fucking day. And every fucking movie that gets released, that happens somewhere in this country. So right, right. How, how, is this a, how is this news? Right, right, right. And then there was also, of course, like those reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Like originally, like the movie had like a, what was it, at 80 or like a 70%. <laughs> And now it went down to 69 because some people thought that the movie was by violence. It's like the video game argument again. It is. It is the same argument as the video game argument. And and what's also funny is I found an article by um, the Franklin uh, Graham, Billy Graham's son from the far right making the same argument. I'm like, horseshoe theory. <laughs> yeah, both the radical left and uh, the religious right making the exact same fucking arguments. That's a... It's amazing how they how they pretty much sound the same. Just like right. change a few words around. Like I remember Sargon of Akkad a few years ago. He would um he found this site that would take uh, quotes from ultra leftists and ones from Stormfront, this neo Nazi website, and would blank out what race they were talking about and play <laughs> play them. And you, it was tough to guess whether this came from from far leftists or from uh, neo Nazis. Uh, that was funny as hell. It's kind of funny you mentioned like the far leftists right now because when I was watching that movie, apparently like the protesters that were actually supporting the Joker. They remind me so much about Antifa. The, yeah, they did. But as the Joker himself says, I, I'm not political. I don't believe in anything. Which is very true to the character that Joker's always kind of been motivated by a deep sense of nihilism. I don't know. Have you read Alan Moore's uh, Killing Joke? Unfortunately, I have not read any of the comic books for Batman. i just only seen the movies. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> there, there was a movie. It was a movie, uh, an animated movie adaptation of A Killing Joke. Do you see that one? Uh, no, i only seen a live-action Batman movie. Sorry. Uh, well, I, I highly recommend you um, give the give the comic a read. It's a phenomenal book. And it kind of, in, in the comic, he um, brutalizes uh, Commissioner Jordan's, uh, sorry, Commissioner, Commissioner Gordon's daughter, um, who's Batgirl. Uh, he, he shoots her in the stomach, which paralyzes her for life. And you see him basically going over her body and unbuttoning her, implying that he raped her. I, I don't know. Well, the Joker is a very, very, very bad guy. And he, like, snaps a bunch of photos. And it was, this was a horrible attempt to drive her father mad, do something to him so horrible that he would eventually become as insane. And he outlines his ideology on the world, that he sees the world is, is a joke. And all it the only difference between the sane and the insane is one bad day. So I'm... And I'm gonna. So he seemed like he was validating his, himself and his own sanity by trying to drive another man insane by doing something horrible to him. And then it goes also into his own past, and also kind of gives him a sympathetic backstory. You see him as also also a failed comedian, but whose uh, wife dies, and is and but in this version, instead of wearing makeup, he counters Batman in a chemical factory, falls into some acid, and bleaches his skin. Then he just walk. He, he just. Comes out and he just starts laughing. That part where you mentioned about him falling into acid reminds me so much about like that 1989 Batman movie. Yeah, that was, was his that was his traditional comic book origin. He didn't wear makeup in the comics. He um he, he was permanent a perma clown. He he, he okay. permanently bleached that color. And also, you mentioned about how he was also a failed comedian. That's also reminds me about the Joker that movie that we saw. So. Right, so it took elements from, from it, but this version of Joker is a very different character than Mark Hamill's Joker or Heath Ledger's Joker. Like Heath Ledger's Joker was a criminal mastermind and just a brutal psychopath who just wanted to inflict pain and chaos everywhere. And similar to A Killing Joke, he was also driven by his own sense of nihilism. There's that great scene where he confronts Two-Face and he says... People will accept anything as long as it's all part of the plan, even if the plan is horrible. No one bats an eye if a truck full of soldiers died, but if you threaten one mayor, or it, it, everyone panics just because it's uh, unexpected. Whereas even if something's horrible happens, if you expect it to happen, it doesn't really elicit any such panic. That is actually a very, very sharp observation of the world around him. And you see that... Th that profound nihilism that motivates his behavior. Is this 
It's kind of funny you mentioned all this because people have been trying to say that the Joker is supposed to be a kiss, <laughs> a kiss like a uh, villain. This no, is not at all. It's not, not at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> like that was like the news clip that I saw the other day. It was like, oh, this is not for kids. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, our rated movies not for kids. Gee, if only they would install some kind of you know rating system on movies that tells you whether they're appropriate for kids or not. If only someday we might have such a thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm just blown away when someone could say something that stupid. An R-rated movie is not for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like Batman has never been for kids for a really, really long time. Actually, but I mean, since- there's been. Batman stories for kids, even that it featured the Joker, but it's still going back several decades. There've also been stories from with the Joker that are completely not for kids. And the Joker really isn't really an appropriate character for children's show. He's a mass murdering, violent psychopath. Right, right, right. And also, let's see, we did like, we talked about that controversy with, um, with the director, there was also the controversy <coughs> with the FBI. Is there any other controversy that we have not covered yet? Well, I just kind of wanted to like dive into like why was this movie uh, controversial in the first place? Uh, a lot of people talked about the um, in- that it would inspire incel terrorism, <laughs> but which is re- really stupid. I can't imagine anyone like even somebody who was on edge watching this movie and being like, you know what? I want to be that guy by the end of it because <laughs> by the end of this, the Joker he's sympathetic at times because you see all the bad things that happen to this guy. You see he didn't have to turn out this way, but would anyone really want to be this guy at the end? You Mostly you just feel bad for him and feel and it's a great tragedy. That's what this movie is. It's a tragedy that he, the world turned him into this monster. He, he didn't have to be this way. But I can't really imagine anyone saying, yeah, that's the guy I want to be. I want to emulate that guy. <laughs> yeah, like it basically kind of assumes on this principle, like this premise that uh, people cannot distinguish between fiction and reality. Like most people have the ability to do that. <laughs> and, and, uh, it's worse than that. They... The media like vilify the um, incels to such an extent, it's really disgusting. Um, dudes who can't get laid, and a lot of them, <laughs> most of those guys, they're just kind of lonely, sad, depressed, and bummed out. I mean, and, and you have all these mainstream media articles that portray these guys as monsters. It's really, it's really disgusting stuff because ultimately. It, what this movie was, what it was a mirror aimed at them, it, them, not really at the mentally ill themselves. But it was commenting on the way the average normal person treats the mentally ill. It was basically holding a mirror to them. Have you done this to somebody in 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 real life? Have you kind of looked the other way at somebody who kind of really needed help? Yeah, yeah. Like there was this scene in the Joker where what happened towards the beginning, he went to like this place to, you know, I guess counseling and he asked for like the drugs and then they refused yeah. the drugs. And then by the time it went to, to that place again, what happened was that they didn't have money, and so they closed down. Right. And and, and that actually was, was where, even though the radical left had been attacking this movie, this movie, ironically, is very center-left there because it's kind of advocating for universal health care, yet they the left don't seem to really give a shit about that. They just want... Uh, to hate on uh, lonely white dudes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> All right. And speaking about like the controversy subject, like they say, it's like, oh, it's the most violent movie ever. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. Not, not even close. No. <laughs> like I've seen like Evil Dead. I've seen <laughs> Saul. I've seen all these horror movies, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like this movie is by far not the most violent one I've seen. No, not, no, not at all. And, um, <clears throat> But, uh, but like, in, in terms of the, the incel thing, there's that scene, of course, later in the movie where he imagines he's in a relationship in his mind with this very attractive neighbor of his, and it reveals later in the movie that all those scenes of them together were just all in his mind. None of the shit really happened. Yeah, also towards the end, it turns out that he was actually in, like, one of those mental wards. And so it makes you kind of wonder just how much stuff in this movie is actually fake? How much is it real? Is it all in right. his head? If it's not in his head, just... And at the end scene where she's where, where he's in her house and she just is horrified at him being there, it, it cuts away before you ever see him leave and kind of leaves you wondering, did he kill her? 
You don't know. Like, she never appears in the movie again after that. But it kind of, like, the gesture he does at the uh, does there kind of implies he did. Uh, speaking about which, like, for the actress who played that character, like, uh, wasn't she, like, in Deadpool too? Yeah, she was. Yeah. Uh, yeah she what's, was, her, what's her name? I don't know. I, I, I don't know that actress's name, but yeah, I recognized yeah, her from yeah. Deadpool too. She was Domino, yeah. Okay. But you can tell there was a, 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 a profound loneliness about him. He invented this re relationship with her in his mind. He kind of probably as a coping mechanism to try to shield himself from the internal loneliness he has. And that's why once he realized and clicks in his brain that um, he's not in a relationship with this woman, it's all in his mind, that that further just drives him off the edge. Like he, he was just think the delusion, the schizophrenic delusion. I, and I'm guessing this character is schizophrenia of some kind in this movie was kind of there as a coping mechanism to keep him sane. Right. There was also the, of course, his mom that also kept him sane too. Like he would go to like the house and he would feed the mom. He would actually help right. him with the bath and but it turned out of course that she was absolutely nuts as well and she apparently did some was complicit in some real horrible things done to him as a child like you mentioned he had a horrible head injury oh we got someone else coming on awesome let's see uh hey uh brandon how's it going hello loudmouth thank you for having me on i was hearing awesome. you guys talking about uh the killing joke Um, what your opinions on this movie? By go, fucking amazing! Like I've seen a lot of movies this year, and this one has to be the best movie. Like one of the top, definitely top three, <laughs> hands down, that I've seen this was, year. Personally, it was my favorite movie I've seen this year. It's probably going to be on my best uh, movie of the year list. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, excellent. What was your favorite aspect of it? Mostly how it, uh, uh, his, uh, ah, it's walking Phoenix is, uh, when he was, uh, you know, being, uh, playing his mental, you know, the character. Yeah, he like, deserves best actor he was for this doing... movie. He did a great job on this film. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, if he, had, if he actually won the Oscar this year, it'd be like the second person that won, like, the Oscar for playing the Joker. Yes, he was. <laughs> yeah, the, the Heath Ledger, of course, and Heath Ledger deserved it as well. He was absolutely excellent. It was in the also dark night. with like the guy uh, Robert Downey Jr. for Tropic Thunder. Yeah, it was like uh, he was like nominated with like uh, Robert Downey Jr. But of course, like it was like a really really close call during that year between those two performances. You know, I would say Walking Phoenix is up there with uh, Jack Nicholson's Joker and Heath Ledger's Joker. Uh, yeah, but there, like, I was talking about the very different. There's very different um, interpretations in these characters. Like the Heath Ledger's Joker was pretty much a, 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 a maniacal psychopath, whereas that was never portrayed sympathetically. Where, or is this mm -hmm. guy um, just kind of feels just like a damaged individual who's just pushed over the edge? Yeah. But basically, I think the best theory I have about this is that, like, by the time Heath Ledger's Joker became like the Joker for Heath Ledger, it's like it's it's been established that the Joker is a badass instead of like a mentally ill person. It's right. Mark Mark Hamill's Joker from Batman the Animated Series is <laughs> also very similarly um, portrayed, just kind of as um, a psychopath, an agent of chaos. But though he though he had more clownish qualities on top of it, whereas Heath Ledger's Joker was just kind of the the most scary and disturbed version of the character. And whereas this was the most kind of realistic version of the Joker. Uh, let's be honest. Usually, most most mentally ill individuals who dress up as clowns and kill people usually aren't the super geniuses that Heath Ledger's Joker was. And neither really was Joaquin Phoenix Joker. He kind of only gets away with his crimes for a while because out of pure luck. Yeah, that's the only thing that's yeah. like unrealistic for me for the film. Like, how could he just get away with just murdering street people on that subway and then some other people <laughs> without anybody noticing it? Or well, that's... 
Well, that's why it was set in the 70s, because there weren't like security cameras everywhere the way they are today. So it would have been possible you could just have shot somebody on a subway. And if there weren't a lot of people there, you'd get away with it. Not, yeah, not that's today, because like the, there'd be security cameras everywhere. Yeah, that was like the only negative that I could possibly think about this film. Like, how could he just get away with all these murders with no camera or anything? <laughs> I mean, when he did do one right on camera at the end of the show, he was immediately arrested after. Then the cops right, right. were right there. Right. But uh, but in in like a subway station, there really wouldn't have been have been any. And you know, it's like in later fantasy scenes with his fictional girlfriend, she's saying, kind of encouraging him along. Oh, those guys, they deserved it. Whoever shot them, was like, <laughs> like it's his sick mind <laughs> justifying what he did. <laughs> Because, of course, you look, find out later, she never said that. She was not even there with him. <laughs> yeah. There's also kind of the way it portrays, like, um, class warfare in it. Uh, it's definitely that it portrays Thomas Wayne as a lot less sympathetically than you've typically seen that character portrayed before. Yeah, basically, he's seen much more nicer. This one is just much more meaner and just crazier. I mean, he's meaner, but at the same time, look at uh, his first perspective. This guy showed up at his house, some stranger, touched and, touched, and touched his kid, you know? Right, Is there right. any dad on earth who wouldn't, um, who wouldn't throw a punch yeah, at some right, guy, right, right. some strange, creepy guy who went up and touched his kid? True. Yeah. So he's not really portrayed as a villain, per se. He just kind, of, But it is a less sympathetic portrayal overall than the way he's been shown before. Right, like he was like portrayed way more differently than I remember for like the movies at least. Well, yeah, and uh, Batman Begins, he's portrayed almost very almost saintly in like the opening before he gets murdered. Like he's portrayed as the perfect dad, and it's such and it's a horrible tragedy when this man is shot right in front of his son's face. Here, not not so much. He's not really portrayed in in such a saintly fashion. Let's talk about the the, the references that I saw besides. Uh, Besides, of course, the uh, the reference to tr Taxi Driver, there was also towards the beginning of the movie where it had like the 70s Warner Brothers logo towards it. There was also right. like a reference to Charlie Chaplin too. Yeah, yeah. They were like at a, when Thomas Wayne's there he, at that theater, it's like they're screening uh, an old, I, what was the name of that movie? I've, I've seen that movie. Uh, Hard Times. Hard Times was the name of that movie, that Charlie Chaplin movie. I, I saw that in film school uh, many years ago. I yeah. don't, it's it's, it's kind of hard to name like the Charlie Chaplin movie because they all seem. I mean, I want. I don't want to say that they're all the same, but like it has the same character, you know. So it's kind of hard to tell what movie it is because it's the same character. Right, uh, Charlie Chaplin. He was actually a Marxist, and uh, there's there was a lot of. Um, anti-rich themes, anti-capitalism themes in his movies. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know about that. <laughs> yeah. Hard Times was definitely probably the one that's most blatant about that. Is Though, I don't know how well it did that in the movie because Charlie Chaplin's character only ends up on the streets due to his own incompetence in the film. So that's not really capitalism's fault, but well, I mean, He also had like a lot of huge balls to make like the movie, like the great dictator i believe it was called where he was making fun of adolf hitler blatantly but it was well, like yeah but it was in america so he could get away with that if right. it was in germany it would have been off of his head for that <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. but um let's see it was like of course the uh the opening with the the 70s warner brothers logo there was of course a reference to Taxi Driver and, of course, Charlie Chaplin. But um, besides that, there's no real reference. <laughs> it's also pretty cool that they did, like, the nod, like, the DN at the end, because most movies nowadays don't actually have the end towards the end of the movie. Right, and I like that this movie um, existed um, on its own. Like, it felt just like its own thing. It's not um, a superhero movie that's made to set up a dozen other movies. Or it... And, and filled with references for movies that they probably won't even make. I think this movie of... probably just transcends the superhero genre into just art. Honestly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like I said, this felt like it, like Todd Phillips wanted to make and Joaquin Phoenix wanted to make a movie about mental illness and about the way society treats the mentally ill, and are pretty much just using a notable comic book character as kind of a vehicle to tell that story. But it feels much less that it's even really about a comic book supervillain. 
Right. Like also another thing that's really interesting, of course, is how oh my god, I forgot my stop right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Brandon, uh, anything anything else you liked about the movie, Brandon? <clears throat> uh how he was uh, portraying uh you know his role when it came to uh you know his character being mentally ill like that was just fucking spot on yeah it really felt uh, like I'm... like i was someone put a camera at a real mentally ill man trying to talk about his problems but he can't really articulate them that well due to his mental illness because because his brain just isn't functioning properly it, it felt very realistic like this is the way a real individual would talk, mm-hmm. which is more than you could say. And as much as I love the dark Knight, that's never, never something I got from Heath Ledger's Joker or, and certainly yeah. not from uh, Jared Leto's Joker, who kind of is probably the worst, <laughs> let's be honest, the yeah. worst person of Joker ever. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> yeah. What? Not a fan of suicide squad. It was, um, largely a mess. Apparently, um, mm-hmm. James Gunn is going to direct the new one coming out. I think next year or something. Yeah, uh, no, I don't know if it's next year. That I, I saw that there was a trailer for it for Birds of Prey, and um, just kind of a semi follow up to Suicide Squad, and it looked really bad. Like I'm not looking forward to this movie at all. Particularly when I read some articles complaining about um, how problematic Harley Quinn was in her early portrayals because. The character is um, her, her mental her mental problems were based on a real psychological disorder, uh, hysteriophilia. It is that causes certain women to like write love letters or seek out men they know to be dangerous. But this is a real mental illness that some women have. I mean, obviously not all women, but yeah, it yeah, is yeah. shocking shockingly a common mental illness. And Harley Quinn absolutely had that. Also, and, like, like towards, like in the movie, like of course, the Joker was also laughing unconditionally. Like, do you know if it's actually a real mental Ill- illness? Too? I believe there is. Yeah, I believe he was basing that on a real mental illness where people will just kind of laugh compulsively. That I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head, but I do believe that is based on a real mental illness. Okay, that's why it annoys me that that they were complaining about that about Harley Quinn, and I'm afraid they're gonna just ruin her character and turn it into some girl power fantasy bullshit that Hollywood farts out all the time nowadays that they're going to just make it that they're just going to turn birds of prey into ghostbusters 2016 or some shit like that. That's what, that's what it looked like to me. Of course. So I'm not looking for, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the movie will be awesome. Margot Robbie is really well cast as Harley Quinn. Uh, Margot Robbie, she's great. She can call me up anytime. I would love to hear. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. probably probably won't happen, but <laughs> uh, but it just didn't seem like they're taking the right direction. I posted another clip from Grudges the Birds of Prey from Batman Brave and the Bold, and there was this awesome musical number called, about the Birds of Prey that is one of my favorites in any cartoon. It. it it actually got the episode pulled in the United States and only broadcast late at night because the song is full of sexual innuendos that I was kind of like shocked that they, that they got away with. So I guess like since everybody agrees that this is like the best uh, Batman movie, I'm mean, not Batman movie, but like the be- one of the best movies this year. Yeah. How would you rank like the Batman movies in the franchise so far for you? The two? Dark Knight is my all time favorite movie. I uh, period. I adore. The Dark Knight. I love all of Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. I think they're all excellent, and and but probably also um, some of the animated ones are incredibly good. Uh, Mask of the Phantasm is an all-time favorite movie of mine from 1993. Either of you seen that? Um, I only <laughs> said so ago, like, okay, I, yeah. You can go first, Brandon. Oh, uh, thank you. I was gonna say like years ago. Uh, I remember like uh, Doug Walker talking about it. Uh, how it's very underrated. It is very underrated. It made no money when it came out. It was a box office flop that uh, it, it did sell well in home video, so it eventually turned a profit that way. But it did not do well in the theaters. And but if you watch it, it's one of the best. It was before um, the Dark Knight came out in two thousand eight. I would say it was the best Batman movie period, live action or otherwise. It was better than any of the older live action ones. It was a really fantastic, tragic movie where Batman you see this kind of romance that develops and you, and he has a mystery villain, the phantasm who um, 
And there, it, it, it builds an interesting mystery plot where there's little clues on who the phantasm is, but it doesn't outright say until the end. And the ending revelation is all really good. The musical scar, and, and I also like that it, it used the Joker as well, but uh, it doesn't introduce him until halfway through, and he's kind of a minor character in the proceedings. But it, but it was still a really good use of the character. I really think Mask of the Phantasm is a criminally underrated movie. Okay, for my favorite Batman movies so far, it has to be, of course, The Dark Knight, then The Joker, followed by Batman Begins, and also Batman um, 1989. Yeah, 89 was good. I mean, Bur Burton did a good job, but I, I think that movie could have been better. It was, it was solid, and then, of course... Each movie in that franchise got worse and worse with each installment. Oh yeah, so, like it got really, really silly. Yeah, <laughs> really, really, really silly. Yeah, we all we all remember how Batman and Robin turned out. <laughs> Man, even yeah. before before even before Batman and Robin, it was also Batman Forever. That was also really silly too. Yeah, I remember Raw Chicken did a great joke where they have uh, Batman uh, crawling through the. the to a river of sewage uh, underground to find the Joker, and he's like, "Oh, smells like Batman forever." <laughs> 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 yeah. And um, and, and I love what Honest Trailers did with about Batman and Robin. They open it in a city full of crime. One man is determined to kill Batman once and for all. His name is Director Joel Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, oh, that was God. fantastic. All these freaking well, Mr. Freeze puns too. It's like so bad. Well, you are you are need to chill out. <laughs> Ice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, actually, that was the best part of the movie. Just because it's <laughs> bad, but it's it's enjoyably bad. It's kind of funny. The worst part of that movie is Robin, who is the most. Un annoying whiny little bitch ever in that movie all his fucking dialogue in that movie is just bitching and complaining and at the end you're like shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> i want a car chick did the car how can we win together if you don't trust me yeah. <laughs> shut up <laughs> oh my god but uh probably why nolan didn't use it but uh brandon what's your favorite batman movies <clears throat> uh definitely the uh christopher nolan uh <laughs> trilogy uh i do like some of the anime ones especially uh the killing joe like oh my god they kind of ruined but, that movie though because they added like this opener with 25 minutes of new content of all that back girl that wasn't in the comic and that, it yeah sucked, except you know? for that yeah but 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 you're right. the part that faithfully adapted the comic was pretty good though. I just wish they mm -hmm. hadn't done that and just put the movie's entire budget and made it just kind of a short film. It would have been better that way. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, another great animated one uh, from 2001 was Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker. That was a really good one. Hmm. It seemed as though I'm missing out all of all these like animated Batman movies. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Tyler, you, need to catch, you need to catch up on them, man. Because like, uh, like I heard like about the one where Batman meets the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was a recent one. I haven't seen that one. That <laughs> one. But, uh, Return of well, well, Return of the Joker was a spinoff of a show called Batman Beyond, which um features like an elderly Bruce Wayne training the next generation of Batman. This new Batman called named Terry McGinnis, who's this 17-year-old kid who kind of stumbles in and finds out he's Bruce Wayne, and eventually he's trained to be the next Batman. And, and it like kind for, of has... For, like, for all these Batman animated movies, do you know if it's actually, like, on uh, YouTube or Netflix or Blu-ray DVD? Um, they are all... They pretty much are all on Blu-ray, but... Um, in fact, I rec highly recommend getting Batman the Animated Series, the complete Blu-ray set. It has, like... It has both two animated movies that were spun off from the show and the entire series. And I believe it's at a reasonable price, too. Because uh, Batman the Animated Series was just all around a great show. Okay. So, yeah, add that to your Christmas list or whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to <laughs> save up for that set, then. Some, some great up episodes like it reinvented mr freeze and one heart of ice and gave mr freeze a really tragic oh, like, this christmas is going to be super super hard for me to save up for money like it's going to be like of course the ultraman sets coming out this month 
Then, of course, that Godzilla set coming out this Godzilla month. Set, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and now that Batman set, it's going to be like a really, really hard time to save that much money for those three right. cities. I'm very lucky that I don't have any kids, so I can afford yeah. to. I can afford to make frivolous <laughs> purchases on myself. Whereas if I had kids, I would not be able to do that. So, right. yeah. so for all you that do have kids, sucker. Okay. I'm kidding. Having kids is awesome. <laughs> I would even argue that maybe like exposing the kids to this kind of shows is actually good. <laughs> like, I, lo I love them when I was a kid. They're they're, they're so. great shows. Yeah. Uh, I watched Batman and the. Well, uh, when Batman the Animated Series first premiered, I was still pretty young, so it was a little, little more mature for me at, at that age. So I kind of more, more fell in love with the show during uh, reruns from like for my case, like I grew up on like the like the comedy stuff, like Rocko's Modern Life, of course, uh, Modern Life. and of course, uh, what was it, uh, the Powerpuff Girls and uh, Cat Dog, Hey Arnold. Uh, I remember course, all those shows. SpongeBob. <laughs> uh, what else? I can't remember all the names right now, <laughs> but I've seen like most of these shows. Like, I was, told I was like a pre, George. like when I was a preteen. Like my favorite shows were like Batman the Animated Series, and they were also I thought the Justice League, which was um, a sequel series to Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series. They were all in like one cartoon universe, and yeah. then. Yeah, same as the cartoons in the past are just so much better nowadays compared to like we have right now. So much. And yeah, it seems that way. Like uh, a lot, there's been a lot of garbage. Like compare, um, compare Thundercats to uh, <laughs> seven years ago compared to that. D did they cancel that Thundercats Go trailer? That was one of the I'm worst not things sure. I've ever seen. It, it genuinely was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Someone says, Pas "Love your reviews, especially idiocracy." Well, uh, Passy Perspective, thank you very much. I uh, highly appreciate that. I love every one of my subscribers. <clears throat> hmm. But. But but that whole Batman the animated series it started a continuity of animate of various animated shows that were all in the same universe that lasted till like two thousand six. They were all part of that. Like speaking about the animated shows, like do you know if they actually produced like uh, cartoons in uh, Japan for Batman too? Yeah, actually, there was one called uh, Batman Gotham Knight that came out in two thousand eight uh, to tie in with the Dark Knight. Okay, and it actually um. It was a various collection of anime anime shorts from Japan, and what's interesting about that one is it's set um, in the same universe as the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Oh, it's the it's the only animated Batman movie that's in direct continuity with one of the live action ones. Okay, it's set it's set between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. It shows ver various encounters with, with some of his villains, and it references the events of Batman Begins a few times, but it's also kind of kind of loosely connected. There's a mention where there's a scene where uh, he encounters uh, Commissioner Gordon and Batman says, Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. the Scare Scarecrow. He's been on the loose ever since that night at the Narrows, obviously referring to the events of Batman Begins. Yeah, like this idea that Batman was actually made and like they made an anime for Batman sounds pretty interesting because like this idea of like East meets West is actually pretty cool because I remember yeah, I, it's like I remember like uh, it was um, <clears throat> it was Blade Runner. I think it actually inspired like many people in Japan. Japan. And then also I heard like they had like an announcement for like a Blade Runner anime too. Not just like the short stuff that came before like Blade Runner 2049, but actually an anime for it now coming on Adult Swim. Really? When's when's that coming up? Um hold on. I had to look at look out for like the article. Give me one minute. Uh yeah. Um yeah, well, I don't get um I don't have basic cable at my house, but um if I wanted to watch something on cable, I just call my parents up and have them record it for me and dr drop by their house. Okay, let's see. The anime for um Yeah, the announcement was actually last year in November let's see, November 2018. Oh crap! Uh, it, it it didn't say what date it's going to be out. No. Nope. But here, <laughs> yeah, but but here's this, the this link one. for it, though. I'm gonna give you guys the link. Uh, All right, we'll, uh, yeah, just post it in the chat. Um, All right. There, because the, there's this cool show on Adult Swim that I want want to record. That's going to be on late at night. I can't watch it when it comes out because I'll be, I got to work in the Primal. morning. But. Primal, yeah, and I really want to check that out because I'm a fan of Gendy Tartakowski's work. Uh, Samurai Jack was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. 
Didn't he also work on Dexter's Laboratory? Yeah, he was the creator of Dexter's Lab. Okay. And, yeah, that was always a good one. I like that in one, in one where he visits Dee Dee's room and it actually has cooties as as an, an, an antagonist. And they're literally like these insect things with these big googly eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. As if cooties are like a real thing. That's that very funny. <laughs> Oh, that was like my show when I was growing up. Dexter's yeah, that- Laboratory. Oh yeah, that that was a good show. It it had a very good um I- ironic mature sense of humor to it. Oh yeah, like most of the cartoons I grew up on in the '90s was like some of the best stuff ever. Oh my god, it's like the kids today are just missing out on these good cartoons. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's some good stuff today. Um, like I remember one time. Um, I was babysitting one of my younger cousins and I put on Phineas and Ferb for them. I never watched it before that. And I was just watching it with them. And I was actually found myself laughing at some of the jokes in it. So I'm like, uh, kids today, uh, cartoons today aren't, aren't too bad. I guess there's also Adventure Time. That's a pretty good show. Adventure Time, yeah. 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 But outside of those two shows, like it's kind of hard to name one show that's actually modern, that's actually as good as the levels that we got in the 90s. Um, I, I want to get that DC streaming app because I heard there was a, th- a third season of Young Justice released for that, but I haven't seen it yet. And Young Justice, the first two seasons from the early 2010s, were was a fantastic cartoon show. Did you ever see that one? Um, I'm not sure if I have, actually. Yeah, I highly recommend Young Justice. Um, it was made by uh, Greg Wiseman, the same guy who made Gargoyles. If you've seen some of my videos, you know I was a fan of Gargoyles. Okay. <laughs> I've done, I, I have a video series uh, reviewing the third season, which I've never bothered finishing because I work all the time and I'm just. <laughs> so you think we cover everything for this movie so far? Uh, pro- uh, probably. Um, I think it was. A, it, jo- I, Joker, one of the, one of the best movies of the year, a very haunting look into mental illness and how I, I feel this movie really is a call for society. And I feel that's why it was disliked by some of these critics. A lot of these critics get off vilifying mentally ill men. And this movie kind of holds a mirror up to them and says why you shouldn't do this. They probably, when Arthur's getting mistreated in the first half of the movie, they saw a bit of themselves in, in those characters and they didn't like it. That's why they gave this movie bad reviews in my opinion. I have a high degree of contempt for a lot of these um, elite uh, mag- elite journalists. Some of these guys and some of the shit they print. Yeah, they print absolute garbage. They dox people. It's really disgusting stuff. I have low contempt for... I, I'm sorry. I have a high degree of contempt for that entire industry. Yeah, basically when it comes down to movies or video games or any form of entertainment, I actually trust the fans more than like the people reviewing it. So, I, I generally do, but at the same time, like... I look back to Michael Bay's Transformers movies, which kept, um, for some reason, making shit ton of money at the box office. So someone must have liked them, but <laughs> I, they were told they were garbage movies. Like they were really bad. <laughs> the the only one I liked so like in that franchise was like the first one. Does it? Only the first one. For Bumblebee was really good. Yeah. The recent one, Bumblebee, which was not made by Michael Bay, actually was really good. Huh. I, 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 it was by far the best Transformers movie ever, but most of Bay's were extremely stupid. Uh, Robot Chicken did this great sketch one time where they um, have Optimus Prime give the all spark to Sam, and he says, Careful, Sam, if Megatron gets the all spark, he will rule the entire universe, or it might kill him, and then possibly raise him from the dead. <laughs> Frankly, Sam, I don't know what the fucking Allspark does. There was like this one skit I saw from Robot Chicken just the other day where they made fun of SpongeBob. What happened was that uh, he accused uh, Mr. Krabs of using, you know, <laughs> fish to make like the cra- the crabs for the Krabby Patties or something. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. We're yeah. all animals here. I'm just the one being natural. <laughs> yeah, that that <laughs> that one was really funny. Their Star Wars one had some great ones. What do you mean they blew up the Death Star? Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> what do you mean? Who's they? What the hell is an aluminum falcon? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they come, they've come up with some really funny shit on Robot Chicken. I would probably give this movie like a four out of five. It's definitely really good. I would definitely rewatch it again when it comes on to home video. 
I can give this movie a 10 out of 10. I really think it's a genuinely great movie. On, well, how about you, Brandon? <clears throat> I give it about a, uh, let's say a 9, 9.5. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, oh, it'll definitely, once it comes to 4K Blu ray, I'll definitely be getting it. I'll definitely be re- rewatching this movie. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be watching so many times, so many times to see the stuff that I miss out. It's because it's like so multi complex and. It is. And and it's a good way of sticking in again to those asshole critics who are like, please, we we think this movie might encourage shooting. Please don't ever commit a shooting. Don't ever commit a shooting. Don't please don't do that. It would do horrible things. Sure, it would generate a lot of clicks for our uh horrible failing websites, but don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. They, they really are trying to encourage shit. It really pisses me off. So but uh, but that's why I'm glad this movie's uh, still succeeding in spite of that it, it deserves to. Yeah, it deserves all the money. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah, so, about um, that, yeah, it's not getting uh, it released in China. What I heard. Yeah, that that's yeah. expected. China actually denies the release of a lot of movies based on like uh, excessive um, violence. And here's another funny thing. Um, one of the one of the reasons why Disney uh, doesn't release uh, movies with homosexual main characters is because China won't um, allow a movie to be released there if it does. <laughs> I swear, like there are just so many companies just like um, you know, and it's all but pandering to China. Yeah, so, that's why like Disney ignored um the, all those social justice warriors who were petitioning Disney to make, give Elsa a girlfriend in that movie because if they had done so then we wouldn't be able to release in china and disney is always like we got to have money money (laughs) money and that will always come before their politics right right there's also i believe that uh, legendary pictures is also owned by a chinese company right now uh yeah yeah it is like um if you saw the movie uh the mag the one about the giant shark it was like a U.S. Uh, Chinese co-production. That's why it was made pretty much equally for American and Chinese audiences. Right. So, so yeah, China. I mean, they have over a billion ticket buyers. So more and more movies try to pander to them nowadays. One's big action movies really try to appeal to a global market. Right. Like I believe it was actually Pacific Rim that actually did much more successful in China than here. Yes, actually, that's that's true as well. Warcraft's another big, uh, probably the biggest example. It uh, was actually a flop here in the United States, but it turned a profit because it was a massive hit in China. Hmm. Because the game was really popular in China. Yeah, it's also interesting how many, you know, companies also make sure to release the movies that we make here before we actually get our own release here. Yeah, but... Like, that is one of the reasons why movies generally, even after adjusting to inflation, have, have much higher budgets than they used to like 30, 40 years ago. It, it's mostly because of the fact that a lot of country, countries with huge populations like China now have like an, a, enough infrastructure to uh, show off American movies, whereas um, 30, 40 years ago, they mostly had to rely just on revenue from in the States. That was a much more limited pool of money. Yeah, so same as so, like movies nowadays always make like a billion dollars, like at least the Disney ones. So, yeah, no, that's another reason I'm happy this movie is doing well. I'm really happy a uh, movie that's not made by Disney um, is ahead at the box office because sick of Disney farting out all this lazy lowest common denominator crap, and people keep seeing it. I guess those those Mickey Mouse hats. I guess. Must have fired like mind control rays in people's brains or something because I, I can't figure out why yeah. all these shit shitty remake live action remakes keep making money even though they're all terrible. Yeah, like I can't believe people went to see the Lion King. It's like, like I thought like they re released like the Lion King like a few not a few years like more than a few years ago actually in 3D. Yeah, the, the original movie, and then they made the remake of it. And I hate that I live in a world where Maleficent is getting a sequel because <laughs> I fucking hated that movie. It was, and that was a movie that genuinely pissed me off. And yet, a, and yet somehow made enough money that it's got a sequel coming out in a couple weeks, which I will not be seeing. So no one asked me my opinion. <laughs> my opinion is go, fu- go fuck itself because it's they they took one of their uh, coolest vi- older villains and they just absolutely ruined her. It was, it was embarrassing. Hmm. 
Yeah. All right. So I think this this is yeah. going to be like the end of the stream, or are we going to continue? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, think I think we wind this down. Plus, I got to get I got to work in the morning. So. <laughs> okay. But, but uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining me, Tyler. Thank you for joining me, Brandon. Okay, before we before we stop this stream, like I want to plug in my social media accounts. Of course, oh, yeah, I, absolutely. Go, go ahead, Tyler. Everyone right. subscribe to Tyler Preston. All right. Uh, I have Facebook and, of course, uh, Twitter and Minds.com. You can find me at Tyler Preston 20 and my YouTube accounts. It's, of course, Tyler Preston 20. Uh, any last words, Brandon? Uh, no, that's it. I'm just part of poor bastards. Be you all know me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, everyone have a great night. Bye bye. All right. And.